Hello and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Kipchu. These are our top stories. Online portal to avail forestry services time-consuming and inconvenient, say users. People applying Australian visa waiting more than three months to get e-medical appointments. And two new snail species new to science discovered in Bhutan. In an effort to make public service delivery efficient through the use of technology, most of the public offices have made their services accessible online. However, not every online system is bringing about the expected benefits to its users. For instance, the Department of Forest and Park Services online service to obtain forestry permits and clearances seems to be creating inconvenience for its users. Some people working in the construction sector said Accessing the services using the online portal is time-consuming and inconvenient at the same time. The Forest and Park Services Department's online forestry services provides numerous services such as timber permits, fishing permits, import and export permits of non-wood forest produce collection and clearance for research applications. The department launched the online system in July last year to make getting forestry permits and clearances faster and easier for the people. However, making payments using the online portal is found to be a hassle, especially for people working in the construction sector. The department issues the permit only after the applicants make payment. Where there are no NRDCL sites, mainly in far-flung areas, be it gravel or stone, we have to pay 50 newton for each trip as royalty. Then after getting approval, we have to generate OTP for each trip. So when we have to make payments for about 30 to 50 trips, it takes around 2 to 3 hours. It is very inconvenient in places without good internet connection. So it takes around 2 to 3 hours and we will pay the internet. In the past, we could pay royalties by visiting forest offices, but they stopped accepting payments in their offices after making the service available online. At the NRDCL, we can make payments in bulk for raw materials, but with the forest office, we have to pay separately for each trip, which is a trouble when we have to make like 100 trips, especially when there is no internet connection. Moreover, sometimes the MBOP doesn't work, so we cannot make the payment even for a day. It will be better if the online forestry services system can be improved where we can apply and make payments in bulk. While using their system, currently, by making payment one at a time, a person has to wait for two to three hours a day. Meanwhile, the Department of Forest and Park Services said they have not received any complaints regarding the matter. Kinzang Hadden, PBS News. The Royal Securities Exchange of Bhutan started the Alternative Investment Market or AIM in 2018 to help small businesses and startups starts up with financing needs. However, no companies have received funding from the AIM as there were not many applicants due to lack of awareness of the investment market and the opportunities it offers. For those who tried, investors were not interested. The Royal Securities Exchange of Bhutan established the alternative investment market platform to assist potential businesses with financial and structural growth in the absence of intermediaries such as angel investors and venture capital firms. Angel investors are individuals who provide financial support to startup companies in exchange for a share of ownership in the company, while venture capital firms invest money in startups and small businesses with the potential for rapid growth and success. The platform was designed to connect startup companies with potential investors. However, the AIM platform has yet to gain widespread awareness and adoption among the business community. I've never heard of the AIM. I did hear about the crowdfunding, but I hardly have idea about the board. 
entrepreneurs are hesitant to approach the AIM platform for investment opportunities due to a lack of awareness about the platform. I think we have to go through the criteria and what are the specifications they are actually looking for. Since we don't know any criteria or any specifications, so we are not aware of how will these AIMs will be, so I'm not sure whether we will be able to take it or not. According to the CEO of the Royal Securities Exchange of Bhutan, a few businesses who sought alternative investment did not appeal to investors who are reluctant to take risk. The reason why we came up with the alternative investment market is because uh, for any company to go public requires certain criteria. First of all, they need track record and uh, uh, proof of profitability. So that has, uh, in fact, uh, discouraged a lot of companies uh, to come forward uh, to go public. The CEO stated that the AIM platform enables companies to scale up and potentially raise more funds through an initial public offering or IPO. IPO is the process by which a private company becomes a publicly traded company by offering its shares to the public for the first time. For Sonam Yudin, this is Sherab Doji, BBS News. The country reopens its border gates for tourists in September last year after a gap of over two years. However, providing the visitors basic amenities such as clean environment and hygienic restrooms are still a concern as per the Department of Tourism. In order to ensure that the visitors have access to clean restrooms and other basic infrastructure, the department outsourced the management of the roadside amenities, starting with restrooms to a private firm on a pilot basis beginning this year. The firm currently manages two restrooms along the Phajuding Trail in Thimpu. This restroom is located along the Phajuding Hiking Trail in Thimpu. It is being managed by ProTouch, a private cleaning and property management firm. This was the condition of the restroom before the firm took over its management in January this year. The firm also manages another restroom along the same trail. The biggest problem is the garbage. We began our work in mid-January. We picked up waste and collected more than 60 kilograms of plastic waste so far. My humble request is for the public to be mindful of their waste. After the renovation and cleaning of the trail, the firm compiled experiences and suggestions from some of the visitors. We spent four days in the mountains and uh, three nights. And uh, to come back down and to find a toilet like this is, uh, is, quite, is quite special. Um, the only suggestion I have is that somebody tells people to stop throwing the small pieces of plastic. of plastic. We need to tell people that this is not meant to live in the mountains. It's very good. I did not expect to yes. find. In our, in our country and also where we live in Hong Kong, we don't have so something nice. like this. Actually, it's so it's very clean, very good. And uh, water, the soap, yes, paper, water, soap, uh, everything. Actually, very, very good. Yes. I'm, I'm surprised. Yes, almost. impressed. Impressed. The company has also collected more than 60 kilograms of waste and recorded more than 400 people traveling through the trail between February and March this year alone. With the upward revision of the sustainable development fee to 200 US dollar per person per night. The need to provide tourists with high-end infrastructure and services has become vital. According to the Department of Tourism, this is to protect and promote exclusivity and to provide a positive experience for the visitors. According to the Director General of DOT, the complaints from the tourists to date are all in regard to improper waste management and unhygienic restrooms. We received some complaints about it from the tourist. Before the pandemic, we used to carry out exit service from tourists. When the tourists leave the country after their visit, and all of them has an issue with the cleanliness of the restrooms and waste management. It has just been around six months after Bhutan reopened its borders to tourists. After another six months, we will be conducting the exit survey. Another six months, the exit survey will be he added that the issues of these amenities arise due to the carelessness of the public. 
If the public is mindful of their waste and proper flushing of the restroom after use, we don't have to hire people to take care of such amenities. The poor and unhygienic condition of the restroom is not caused by the tourist. It is the public here who fails to keep it clean. The Department of Tourism states that if the pilot project bears positive outcomes, they will hand over the government toilets in the country to private firms like ProTouch. They added that providing clean restrooms and a clean environment to our visitors is an obligation. Changadawa, PBS News. Access to quality education remains a challenge for students with disabilities despite the country's focus on inclusivity and diversity. The Special Educational Needs SEND program provides hope for students to learn and grow in an environment that caters to their specific needs. However, at the Sonamga Primary School in Pinsuling, limited disabled friendly facilities pose significant challenges for both teachers and students. Sonamga Primary School has been providing education for students with disabilities for more than a month. The Special Educational Needs Program has been relocated to Sonamga School from Pinsuling Middle Secondary School for this academic year. The SEN program has been relocated to Sonamga School because it is more accommodating for students with disabilities. The decision was based on the fact that Sonamga School has toilets inside the academic block, making it more convenient. We discussed the matter with parents and made the move accordingly. School officials also cited the proximity of the hospital as another reason for shifting the program to Sonamga School. However, despite the move, the lack of facilities remains an issue. There is a requirement for at least five classrooms to cater to students with disabilities, but currently we only have two classrooms available. As a solution, we are planning to partition the existing rooms. However, there are still challenges with the toilets where the doors are too narrow for wheelchairs to pass through and there are no railings or ramps available. While this school is a slight improvement over the previous one, the facilities for the SEN program are almost non-existent as the school was initially built for mainstream education and not specifically for the students with disabilities. Consequently, there are no ramps or railings available at this time. Numerous facilities are needed that require attention. While my child with Down syndrome can walk independently, there are other students who have more severe disabilities. Unfortunately, the school lacks even a basic facility like a ramp, making it difficult for students with disabilities to access the classrooms in other areas of the school. The shortage of human resources to teach students with disabilities is yet another challenge. At present, there are only five special education teachers to cater to nearly 25 students with disabilities. In response to the pressing need for facilities, the officiating Tromde Education Officer said that the Tromde Education Sector held an emergency meeting recently and agreed to construct all necessary facilities within the current financial year. Additionally, they are planning to build an integrated sand building as part of the next five-year plan. For Kilidem in Finseling, Namgedem, PBS News. Now, Bhutanese applicants seeking medical checkups for Australian visas are facing significant delays with wait times of up to three months or more to see a doctor. This is despite making the service available from the hospitals in Gelifu and Monger earlier this year to attend to the increasing number of applicants. Prior to that, the National Referral Hospital in Thimpu was the loan service provider. At the National Referral Hospital, every evening, people line up and wait for their turn to register for the e-medical service. Most of them are unsure if they will get the chance to register or if the two hours wait will go in vain. The registration starts at 4.30 p.m. and ends at 6.30 p.m. It is very difficult to get an appointment. After the registration, we have to wait for more than three months. The appointment I got was only at the mid of July, so we can see that it is almost like a three month. And I also did a register 
to go at the Gelfu and what, what I got was even in Gelfu I got appointment only at July and I also tried to contact uh, Mongol hospital so that we can have uh, early medical examination but what I found is that they are saying that only the appointment is still May 11 since the doctor will be uh, for a medical leave. It's been more than a month since my wife and I applied for medical checkup. I have not received any confirmation calls yet. I would be grateful if the concerned authority can look into the matter. The medical officials, on the other hand, say their primary responsibilities at the hospital often hinder effective service delivery for visa medical checkup. In addition, lack of adequate machine and technicians is also a challenge. There are only three X-ray machines in the National Referral Hospital. According to the medical superintendent, more than 20 technicians apply for either resignation or extraordinary leave during every Human Resource Committee meeting, which happens once every two weeks. As a result, those staying back have to work on weekends to ensure uninterrupted service delivery. For Ugin Doji, Karmasum Tanwangda, PBS News. Chewing betel nut has become part of the Bhutanese culture as majority of the population consume it. But many do not seem to be aware of the consequences. The doctors say it can lead to oral submucous fibrosis or the oral precancerous condition. However, if detected at an early age, doctors added that it is preventable. The doctors at the National Raffle Hospital say about six to eight patients with Oral pre-cancer condition visit the hospital daily these days. According to health specialists, chewing betel nut has been linked with tooth decay, oral precancerous condition, and oral cancer, among others. The main cause of oral submucous fibrosis in uh, in our country is chewing betel nut, that is doma, and its products. When we say its products, uh, panpara, krasniganda, sakila, supari. All these things are in included, including gutka. Then also they have the habit of chewing tobacco, uh, smoking, al alcoholism. All this contributes. Of course, the other 10% uh, is like they are unfortunate. It is not uh, in our hands. But 90% is preventable if we quit these habits. He added that people do not comply when they ask them to visit the hospital after every six months for a dental checkup. He said this delays detecting the disease at an early stage. Dr. Gyan added that 90% of oral precancerous stage can be prevented. If they come when there is no caries or the caries has just begun, then we can go for protective measures, we can go for fillings, we can go for restorations, we can go for root canal treatment and then we can save the tooth. But if they come at a very late stage, then we cannot do all these procedures and the tooth has to be taken out and the person finally loses his or her tooth. But according to a few people, although they know that chewing betel nut can cause cancer, they are not able to quit it. Most people chew betel nut considering it as part of Bhutanese culture. When they don't chew betel nut, I feel like something is missing. So I have been chewing betel nut. As per health reports, the country reported more than 400 cases of oral precancerous condition in the last three years. For Karmawandi, Kinzang Hadin, PBS News. Now, without willing kidney donors coming forward, the dialysis centers in the country are under pressure. There are only seven districts in the country that have dialysis facility today. And in Thimpu, the situation is much worse. Patients from other districts come to Thimpu due to better services. Besides, the country has only two nephrologists who are both stationed in the capital. With the rise in the number of patients with kidney failure, their workload has also increased. This is the scene at a dialysis center in Thimpu. Each day, the two nephrologists have to perform dialysis on around 50 patients. Due to the increasing number of patients, the duration of dialysis sessions has now been reduced by half. A dialysis session usually lasts around four hours. Today, there are around 400 Bhutanese on dialysis in the country and overseas. 12-year-old Kazangdoji is one of them. 
He comes to the dialysis center every week. He is the youngest patient at the unit today. Accompanied by his family, he came all the way from Samdrup Jonkar to Thimpu for dialysis. He was in class 5 when he had to discontinue his studies after being diagnosed with kidney failure. With frequent visits to the dialysis unit, he had to quit school after his midterm examinations. The father says his son lost all enthusiasm for life. Doctors say Kezang's disease could have been cured if it was detected early. Most of the time we have to do the, our routine screening tests. Every person should do the urine test and blood test for the kidney diseases yearly to see whether their kidney, how much it is functioning or any problem is there or not. And the, mostly the diabetics and the hypertensive peoples, and they should regularly follow up uh, their, for their kidney, uh, kidney function tests. Since 2007, around 100 patients received kidney transplants according to the Bhutan Kidney Foundation. According to the foundation, people fear donating kidney due to lack of awareness on the transplant surgery. Mismatch of blood groups between donors and patients, age factor, legal and medical issues concerning the donors are also affecting the number of donors. However, the foundation says a lack of incentive to donors is the main hindrance which keeps people coming forward to donate. We constantly deal with the patients and when their kidneys fail, the doctor suggests they get a transplant which requires an immediate donor. We face a lot of difficulties due to the shortage of donors. The executive director added that in the last eight months, 15 individuals came forward to donate kidney in exchange for money. However, Buying and selling of human organs is prohibited in the country. Meanwhile, the health ministry is looking for potential partnerships from international institutions to start kidney transplant services in the country. Tsung Diki for BBS News. The National Biodiversity Center recently made an exciting discovery to previously unknown species of aquatic snails in a stream near the Royal Temple College. Through thorough analysis of both morphological and DNA data, the research team was able to confirm the existence of this new species. This discovery is a positive indication of the health of the country's forest ecosystem. In May of last year, Choki Kelsen and Funsun Namgil from the National Biodiversity Center collected specimens of the two previously unknown snail species. Following scientific confirmation, the new species were named Tricula Tashi and Arahaya Benji. Tricula Tashi was named after Dr. Tashi Yangzom Doji, who led the National Invertebrates Inventory Project in Bhutan and has played a significant role in biodiversity conservation. Dr. Tashi previously served as the program director of the National Biodiversity Center and is currently director of the Department of Livestock. Similarly, Arhaya Benji was named to honor Dashu Paljur G. Doji for his contributions to environmental and biodiversity conservation in the country. With the addition of these two new species, Tricula Tashi and Arhaya Benji, Bhutan's snail species count now includes five Arhaya species and two Tricula species. The new species discovery in the country indicates that the forest health system is very good and it also indicates uh, the ecological systems or ecological balance is really good. And in addition, the snail also indicate the uh, water quality and also it can determine uh, whether the water uh, can uh, carry the pesticides or infect, uh, infecting insects or nematodes. The National Biodiversity Center carries out sample collections regularly. After the samples are collected, morphological and DNA analysis are done. The procedure also includes comparison with other species before concluding whether the species is new to science or the country. After discovering the new species, then we need to uh, publish the paper on journal article, which will be reviewed by the uh, anonymous uh, reviewers around the world. And after their acceptance and after the acceptance from the journal, then the paper is published and then we can authenticate that the species are new to science or new to the country. Snail inventory and other inventory projects have been carried out in Bhutan since 2012. 
Bhutan has a total of 122 snail species. Devika Pradhan for BBS News. That's it for this week. Do join us as we bring you the next edition of the program next week. Take care and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.